Hello, hello everybody. My name is Lieutenant Dessler for Two Hands Too Many Games and it seems like I'm starting a new game each and every time I want to do a video or a series. And I am doing Outlast because why the fuck would I not want to do something that is terrifying? This will probably help prep me a little bit better for Alien Isolation because I'm going to do more of this stuff. Uh, hopefully while I am not on set, it seems like my work is starting to pick up now. So I have to do a lot of recording, a lot of editing, and ugh, my oh my oh my. I have, I've played through Outlast, uh, not through through Outlast. I've played maybe the first, I don't know, the eighth of the game. <laughs> So hopefully I uh, stop being a little chicken shit if I actually finish this. Anyways, Outlast contains intense violence, gore, graphic sexual content, and strong language. Please enjoy. You are Miles Upshur, an investigative reporter whose ambition is about to earn him an intimate tour of hell on earth. Always willing to risk digging into the stories no other journalist would dare investigate. Why would you do that? You will seek out the dark secret at the heart of the Mount Massive Asylum. Stay alive as long as you can. Record everything. You are not a fighter. To navigate the horrors of Mount Massive and expose the truth, your only choices are to run, hide, or die. I'm probably going to die a lot in this game. Because I don't like it. And this is one of those things where I'm not great with horror games too much. Um... I find horror games to be one of those things that I'll kind of start and not finish if I don't have a weapon or a way to defend myself. Even in Alien, alien Isolation, the alien is terrifying in all matters. So I'll probably delete whatever Alien Isolation videos I have on my channel and start a fresh start new and fucking go for it. Uh, as I said before, uh, work is starting to pick up quite a bit, so that'll cause some slight problems for my for myself in getting content and videos out. So uh, days that I'm not working, I'm I'm going to just basically sit and mass mass produce recordings, uh, edit them, or find someone to help help me edit my videos so I can get them up for you guys to watch. So, let's do this. September 17th. <clears throat> oh my god, I got hiccups. Uh, 2013. From 1026 blah 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 at mute, mute email.com. Tomorrow's up sure at gmail.com. Subject, tip, backslash, illegal activity at Murkoff Psychiatric Systems. You don't know me. Have to make this quick. They might be monitoring. I did two weeks of software consult at Murkoff Psychiatric Systems facilities in Mount Massive. All, all sorts of NDAs. I'm very much breaking right now, but serious. But seriously, fuck those guys. Terrible things happening here. Don't understand it. Don't believe half the things I saw. Doctors talk about dream therapy, going too deep, finding something that had been waiting for them in the mountain. People are being hurt, and Murkoff is making money and needs to be exposed. Okay, there we go. Oh my god, and this weather is just fucking brutal. It's chapping my lips so badly. Cool. Also, if you guys don't know, it hasn't been full- It's been made uh, aware fully. Um, for those of you that are in the region of where I live, um, there is a place called the Rio Theater. Uh, okay, no, it's, no, it's this way, documents this way, notebook, okay, cool. Um, there's a place called the Rio Theater, and it's actually in threat of being um, redeveloped. The, the theater itself is owned by a good friend of mine. She, um, she's trying to figure out uh, a way to buy the theater. Buy the theater. The theater is a single 
Why the fuck did I waste that? How the hell do I turn night vision on? Oh, there we go. Can't believe I fucking wasted a battery. Oh, there we go. Oh. Oh, look at that. Yeah, let's, let's read this. Uh, I'll go back to what I was saying before. I start feeling sick just looking at this place. Mount Massive Asylum. Shut down amid scandal and government secrecy in 1971. Reopened by Murkoff Psychiatric Systems in 2009 under the guise of a charitable organization. Cell phone reception cut off abruptly a mile out. More like a jammer than lost signal. The Murkoff Corporation has a long track record of disguising profit as charity. But never on American soil. Whatever they thought they could get out of this place has to be big. Might finally be the story that breaks the bastards. Uh, so yeah. Um, I've been asked by the head of the Rio, or the owner of the Rio right now, not the building, but the owner of the Rio, to, um, do something for her. So what's going on is that in order to, um, in order to secure funds for the Rio itself because it's a single it's a single screen theater it's very very old school it's actually a very old theater in general um, we're doing a live telethon like event the entire thing's gonna be live streamed and we have two MCs this is gonna be a 30 hour event to try and raise money for the Rio uh, for the Rio in order for the building to be purchased by my friend Corin Lee. Now if you go on Facebook and you actually type in the Rio Theater, you will see um you will see the uh the stories and the links and everything that's required. Kevin Smith, who is a film and TV director, is actually gonna do two nights to raise money for the Rio. So if we can get, if we can get, um, if we can get a big name director like that to come in and help us, then, you know, hopefully this 30 hour thing that we do will, um, help us as well. So for me, my, my, my role in this for the, um, uh, Oh, for love of God. Stand up. There we go. My role in this is actually to help stage manage. And those of you that don't know, um, I do live theater. Uh, not as much as I used to do, but I do still... I do... I do do live theater still. And the shows that um, I do are... Uh, they're a lot of fun. I can't go too much into it. If you want to know what I do, just Google, um, G-O-T Live. Have a look at the, um, I don't like this music. Have a look at the, um, the, uh, the videos that are put up there. And, um, hopefully <laughs> you'll get an idea. There, there'll be some safe photos as it were and then there will be some not so safe photos but if you want to come and have um, a look at the show if you want to come have a look at the show then yeah come on in or uh, come up to Vancouver and come support if you want if you want you can um You can watch the 30 hour telethon that we're gonna do. And you can help support the Rio Theater that way. Because it it is a bit of a heritage thing. It's been around since I think like the 1930s. Or 1930s, 1940s. I can't remember the exact history of the Rio. And I probably should if I'm gonna promote... If I'm gonna promote the theater and my work in it. Why? Oh, for fuck's sakes. 
Well, there we go. Oh. Can't believe I just wasted two batteries. Fuck my life. Thank God a battery. There we go. Yeah, I should know the history of the theater because the fact that I don't know the entirety of the, the, th the theater's history is a bit of a bother to me. And you know what? I am actually going to look up the history of this theater just so that I don't feel bad. Now, is there a wiki on this thing? So this way you guys know exactly. Ah, here we go. The Rio Theater is an independent multidisciplinary art house in Vancouver, BC, Canada. Built in 1938, the Rio served East Vancouver pr primarily as a movie theater until 2008, when new owners began to add live music and multimedia and multidisciplinary art events. One of which I have done for the last two years. Uh, built in 1938, uh, the Rio seats, seats 420 people, ah ha ha, some people will get that joke, including a balcony section. The projection room houses both a vintage 35mm projector and a 3D digital projector added in 2010. I did not know that Corin had a 3D projector. The venue includes a lobby with concession voted best in 2010 and 2011 for single screen theaters in Vancouver. A large stage and a backstage green room for live performers. Yep, because I had to clean that stuff off. Again, Google GOT 2017 and 2016 live. Both of those shows I did. I stage managed. I'm not in them per se. Though last year I think I kind of half played death, so. Well, hopefully we'll make it work this year. Since the evolution in 2008, the Rio has hosted Hollywood blockbusters, local independent filmmakers, midnight screenings of cult classics, the toddler-friendly Movies for Mummies series, local and international film festivals, comedy festivals, queer film events, burlesque shows, screenings and tours for local public schools, political events, religious services, spoken word and other live performance, and local and international live music. Oh, and you have to be over 19, really, to go into the theater or to purchase the liquor that is there. Just so you know. Uh... Yeah, anyways. So, have a look at that. Come and, come and support the Rio Theater. If you ever do a road trip up into Vancouver, yeah, it can be a bit of a shit show sometimes. But... If you actually come to us and you actually explore the Lower Mainland, the Lower Mainland is beautiful. It is gorgeous. And I cannot recommend more or highly that you go and see a show at the Rio. It doesn't matter if it's a movie, if it's a live event, if it's a burlesque show. Um, there's a lot of things that we that we do in Vancouver because a lot of our art houses are starting to disappear. And the fact that Corin has turned this single screen theater into a venue where performers can go out on stage is amazing. And if things go well or right, then maybe you'll see me actually do uh, a live recording or two for two hands, too many games in order to help bring people to the Rio. And who knows, instead of watching a movie or watching a burlesque thing, just to break up the monotony of, I shouldn't say monotony, but to break up the what we do on the stage, hey, maybe you might be able to see a video game or two. 
And depending on how it works out, um, I might do, I might surprise or I might go, hey, let's have a look at, you know, what we've got. And I may or may not do audience participation in these events as well. Or in my section if I'm allowed to do it. Anyways, let's continue on with the game. Murkoff Psychiatric Systems, Project Wall Rider, Mount Massive Care of, Case Number 174, Patient Initials, WPH Billy, Consultation Date, 2012-10-14, Initial Date of Patient Consult, 2009-04-12, Patient Age, 19, Gender, Male, Observing Physician, Dr. Carl Houston, DBNR, Therapy Status, Patient claims to have progressed to self-directed lucid dream states. Morphogenic engine activity observed at unprecedented scale. Continuing stage 4 hormone schedule. Diagnostics. Spirometry revealed no bronchial accumulation. Hemato uh, hematocrit centrifuge again failed to separate erythrocytes. Highly worrisome. MRI revealed arrhythmic REM and REM. Cycle. Laughter in NREM state. Interview notes. Billy asked about the status of his mother's lawsuit against Murkoff and the asylum. This represents a catastrophic breach in security, despite Billy's claims that he discovered the truth in the blood of the dreams of Dr. Trogger. Note, the only Trogger on company records, one Richard Trogger, is an executive from MRD. All orderlies and security personnel must be questioned and video security improved to include analytical biometrics. Murkoff Psychiatric, Psychiatric Systems, Project Wall Rider, Mount Massive, Care of. Or Colorado. Frankly, I have no idea where the fuck we are. Somehow, I don't remember this blood being here. Or maybe I'm just not paying attention because, you know, my eyes are still healing. Um. Okay, so much for going into there. Okay. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. Probably not. Hi, it's a lunchroom. I don't like that sound. What the fuck is that? Looks like someone's large intestine next to a Pepsi Cola. Cola, drink it. Mm, how about I don't? I don't like the fact that it's fucking dripping. Oh, that's my blood. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Come on. Hope you get fat ass. Um, I don't like this. Don't like this at all. Thought I saw somebody. Okay. Library. <laughs> Holy fuck! Ah! Fuck. This shit. This is probably one of the reasons why I didn't finish this game. Because I fucking don't like s jump scares.
Christ! They killed us. They got out. The, the various. You can't fight them. You have to hide. You can unlock the main doors. Cross security control. You have to get the fuck out of this terrible place. How are you even talking? Now, a bit of a morbid curiosity here. Okay. That is fucking great. No one that you should be concerned about? I... I see. Merciful God, you have sent me an apostle. Guard your life, son. You have a calling. I really, really, really don't like this. Just like a gun would be fucking fantastic. Proclaim the gospel. I'm inside. Bodies everywhere. Blood. Burn marks. Heads lined up like bottles behind a bar. Dead Murkoff scientists hung from the ceiling. Their badges say Murkoff Advanced Research Systems. Murkoff's long time MO has been to profit off the exploitation of supposed charity. Fuck the third world and bankroll another billion. How did Murkoff think they would make money off a building full of crazy people? There's some kind of tactical cop pinned like a pig on a spit. Tells me to get the fuck out and then dies. Would have been a good thing to hear when I could still leave the way that I came. Yeah, that would have been fucking nice, wouldn't it? The Murkoff Corps. United States Office Warrant for Seizure. Case number 29475 On the matter of the seizure of Mount Massive Psychiatric Center. Murkoff Psychiatric Systems. Mount Massive Wilderness Area Country Road 112. Affidavits. Having been, having been made before the Board of Directors by Murkoff Hardline Security, MHS, who has reason to believe catastrophic security failure of psychiatric center with imminent danger of environment contamination, we are satisfied that the affidavit its, and testimony establish sufficient evidence to require urgent axa, action on the part of MHS and the grounds for the issue of this ward. You are hereby required to grant MHS full access to all facilities and surrender complete authority to its agents. By acceptance of this document, you and any surviving relatives. I like how that's in brackets. Surrender all claims of litigation against the Murkoff Corps or 
Corp. or its subsidiaries for the actions of MHS or the circumstances which required their actions regardless of responsibility. That's fucking fantastic. Can't fucking get in that way. I'll fucking take that. Could have had four batteries instead of me, you know, fucking around. <laughs> Let me out! And go from this side to the other side. Search left to right. What the fuck is wrong with this screen? Yeah, I'm stepping in some guy's guts. Sorry there, dude. Before I continue on that way, Murkoff Psychiatric Systems Project Wall Rider, Mount Massive, CO, case number 136, patient initials CLW, Walker, consultation dated 2013-0528, initial date of patient consult 2011-0128, patient age 332. Gender, male. Obser observing physician, Dr. Rudolf Verneck. Notation by Dr. Walsh. Therapy status, morphogenic engine activity plateaued at roughly 2,000 ppm. And safety progressed beyond stage 3 hormone schedule. Diagnostics, spirometry revealed light to medium bronchial accumulation. MRI scans consistent with patients' reported dreams. Interview notes. Walker was interviewed in restraints following his self-inflicted mutilations. Restraint have been have had to be altered to accommodate his enormous size. Extensive dermal eruptions as consistent with failed morphogenic engine cellular, cellular activity. He claims the skin ripped from his forehead allows for a truer way of seeing. Seems to have some boyhood experience of Trotera lizards and their Proteral eyes. I'm pretty sure I pronounced that incorrectly. He has expressed anxiety about his flesh, specifically around his lips and nose. Attending orderlies should be advised to watch for further self mutilation. The mental traumas he sustained while serving in Afghanistan seem to be regarding retarding progression of the ME process. His predominant fixation, amplified by therapy, is a manic exaggeration of military security protocol a continuation of both chemical and physical restraints is highly recommended oh that's great so we have a yet an ex US marine soldier here who's fucking not doing all that great But we just don't go into that bathroom, yeah? I want to get into there. Cannot get into... Security room. Well, Ooh. 
What the fuck? I don't like this at all. And what do I do? I go right down the fucking hall. What is wrong with me? Let's see how bad this is. Witness. The witness. I'm already beat all to hell, picking broken glass out of my scalp. Crack, couple of cracked ribs, nearly killed by a deformed giant. Looks like somebody tried to fuck start his head with a cheese grater. He throws me through a wall, knocks me unconscious. I wake up and some doughy old man with a face with like an alcoholic kitty filler in a homemade priest outfit calls me his apostle. Not a job I asked for. There are words scrawled in blood everywhere. I'm getting an ugly feeling in my gut that the priest is writing them, and for my benefit. Is that a fucking hand? It is. It's a hand and a head. Oh, this is fantastic. It's filled with nothing but body parts. Ugh. And two get and two get two get <laughs> two dead security guys. Fucking take the matter. I don't like this. As oh, I do have the ability to save, but I have to save and exit. And track my footsteps. Well, this is where I need to get into. So I need a fucking key card. Going there after. Wow, you look totally fucked, dude. Fucking orderly, what is this? Excuse me. <coughs> Holy fuck. Excuse me. Oh. From Helen Granite. To group four eight four one six at Murkoff Corp. Lu. Subject: Project Wall Rider on site inspection. Dear sirs, the full report pending. No immediate action is required on the part of the Murkoff Corp. The profit potential of Project Wall Rider remains staggering high. Staggering, staggeringly high. The four fatalities contain enough ambiguous data to make any litigation, if evidence is correctly managed, impossible. Project Wall Rider remains a dangerous initiative and there will almost certainly be fur further casualties. As with others, however, family and government interest in the patients is so low as to make any chance of legal action actions vanishingly unlikely. Violence among patients is increasing as the morphogenic engine therapy gets closer to producing working models. But a combination of physical and chemical restraints has proven sufficiently effective to assure continued control and profit. Respectfully, Ellen Granite, Murkoff Legal Mitigation Department. That's fucking fantastic. So now, not on top. Now, on top of them fucking, you know, covering up all the shit that they're doing at this place. This place is, I'm guessing, some sort of. Um, medical or psychiatric, um, military research facility of some sort. I mean, there was the cop that was there, but cop dresses more military than it was police officer. I mean, I guess he could be SWAT to a certain extent, so. It's not giving him the option. So I'm gonna leave you alone in A125.
Jimmy Daly Dallaire, Deputy Director of Colonic Hydrotherapy 1968. You look really, really unpleasant. Human Resources. I can't even read the fucking name. Oh, Olivier. Or Olivier. Oh my god, Oliver. I'm gonna say Olivier because I have a friend whose name is actually spelt like that. W. Baranasik. Assistant Director of Behavioral Medicine 1954 to 1960. 63? Yeah, 63. Clyde Perry, Director of Historical Refinement 1959 to 1961. Joyce. Well, I need to find the card. Electrical room, library, recreation. So I can't go up the stairs because it's fucking locked off. I mean, theoretically, I could go downstairs, but um, I'm going to search this floor first because, you know, top to bottom or, you know, left to right, that kind of shit. But I will have to continue that this. Oh, fuck, you're alive. Damn it. Well, I got no choice. I have to go down that way. But that choice, that hallway is going to have to wait until the next episode. Unfortunately, I'm all out of time and this is where I'm going to have to leave it. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing more, even scaring the ever-living bejesus out of myself. And if you would like to know more about the Rio Theater, and if you want to help support the Rio Theater and make sure that it stays from being redeveloped by some super conglomerate that wants to tear down the theater, um, Google the Rio Theater and have a look at it, read the news reports, the stuff that's been going on. If you can make it up to Vancouver and you want to see Kevin Smith, like see Kevin Smith live, come in. Um, the first show is already sold out, so if you want to see a second show, you're going to have to get tickets now and you're going to have to uh, try and make your way up here. Anyways, thank you guys for coming out to join and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.